Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics. In this DCS AH64D video, we'll look at the creation and use of points on the Tactical Situation Display, or TSD. In the next video, we'll explore the TSD route functions. The AH64D provides a database of 149 points with three separate partitions for waypoint hazards, control measures, and target threats. Waypoint hazards are numbered 1 to 50, control measures 51 to 99, and targets and threats from 1 to 50. Points cannot be shared directly between these partitions. Crews can select which partition they will use when adding a point. We'll cover this a little bit later. From the point page at B6, we can manage waypoint hazards, control measures, and target threat points. These are graphically indicated on the TSD it can be used as direct to navigation, acquisition sources, and other uses. Before we jump into the point page, let's first mention terrain points. When on the TSD and the cursor acquisition CAC option is enabled at R5, either the pilot or the CPG can cursor slew to desired location on the map and cursor select to drop a terrain point. The pilot will drop a white cross and PLT symbol and the CPG will drop a white cross and a CPG symbol. This is a fast and easy way to create a point that can be shared between the crew members. Let's first make sure that all point types can be displayed on the TSD. Select T3 to open the show page and then T6 to display the coordinate show subpage. On the left side, we have four point options that can be toggled on and off for display. L2 displays general control measures. Control measures provide a graphic for indicating locations for facilities and locations on the ground, as well as known and templated friendly and enemy unit locations. The control measures selected at L2 will show hide icons such as airfields, farts, NDBs, etc., provided they are not part of the current route or the current direct to. They are not waypoints or targets. In the real world, C-51 typically is reserved for your home base. It should be pointed out though that control measures do not display threat rings around them. L3 will show hide friendly control measure points. L4 will show hide enemy unit control measure points. And L5 will show hide target and threat points. We'll enable all of these and then press B6 to display the point page. Hazards cannot be toggled off and are always displayed. Individual waypoints are not shown in the attack phase, apart from any waypoints that are part of your current route if your current route option is enabled on the main show page or if you open the route page. Note that in the bottom center of the page is the heading to the selected waypoint. For B2, we can select either navigation or attack phase. Just as there are separate show page options for navigation and attack phases, you can also set separate coordinate show options per phase. As such, you can set up one phase for a particular set of points and the other phase for a different set of points based on what you wish to see for a certain phase of the mission or swap between the two TSD show configurations. When placing a point, we can do so using the shortcut method or the longer method that requires input of an abbreviation. Let's first discuss the shortcut method. Along the left side of the TSD page are the point control options. In all cases, we first press add at L2 to add a point. When add is enabled, we now have a list of point types listed below. Waypoints at L3, hazards at L4, control measures at L5, and targets at L6. The selected point type is listed at L1, in this case, target. When in nav phase, the default point selection when adding a point is waypoint. And when in attack phase, the default point selection when adding a point is target. We can now slew the TSD cursor over the desired location and cursor select to drop the selected point type. In this case, I created target point 01 in red. Let's try this again, but with a waypoint this time. When we create a waypoint, the waypoint number will automatically be the next available waypoint entry in sequence within the waypoint partition. 
blast will create a control measure point using the shortcut. This will default as a checkpoint control measure with a control measure number, in this case, 51. We now have three different point types on the TSD. Let's look at them on the coordinate page at T5. At T5, we have the coordinate list that will show target and threat points with their location and elevations. Control measures at T2 list the control measure points we create. Waypoints and hazards are listed at T1. If we click a variable action to the right of an entry point, we can view additional information about that point. Selecting the left variable action button will make that point our acquisition source. Next, we'll discuss creating a point based on an abbreviation identifier. As before, select Add at L2, and then the point type. In this case, I'll keep it as a target point. To avoid additional button presses, let's first select abbreviation ABR at T4. This is the recommended procedure after selecting Add if the IDENT abbreviation isn't already known. If you select IDENT and then ABR, you'll have to reselect IDENT after going to the ABR page. Here, we can see all the available point options with their abbreviation codes. You can scroll through the pages by pressing the arrows at B2 and B3. Waypoints and general control measures are in green, hazards in yellow, friendly unit control measures are in blue, and enemy control measures, targets, and threats are in red. For this first example, I'll select page three and find armor enemy, or AE. Reselect ABR to return to the point page, and then select identity, or IDENT. Using the keyboard unit, or KU, type in AE, and then press enter. We can now add free text to provide greater detail if needed. I'll enter T72. Once done, press enter. The free text accepts a maximum of three characters. Inputting more than three characters results in the KU flashing, indicating a valid entry. Next, we'll see the coordinate that the point will be placed. We can either enter a new coordinate or slew the cursor to the desired TSD location and cursor select it. Note that the icon will not be immediately placed. Upon pressing enter, the elevation of the terrain at the location will be displayed on the KU. You can either manually adjust it or press enter to save it. Once saved, the enemy armor unit icon will appear at the selected location. If you go back to the coordinate page and select control measures, we can see it listed. Let's do one more, in this case a battle position. And this is a commonly used point for which you would carry out an attack. Press add, select control measure, select ident, enter B, P on the KU and press enter. Press enter to accept the free text, slew the TSD to the desired location and depress it, and then press enter again to accept the elevation. In addition to adding points, we can also delete them. To do so, move the TSD cursor over the point to delete and then depress the cursor controller to select it. Then, select Delete at L4 and Yes at L3. If you wish to add or edit the free text of a point, do the same process, but select Edit at option L3. The Store option at L5 brings up the Now button. The purpose of the selection is to enable the crew to perform a flyover store of a point. By default, it will store a waypoint in nav phase and a target in the attack phase. An example use with the aircraft taking fire, the crew selects point, store, now, to drop a waypoint or target at the location, deploy to cover, and then use that point as a reference. It could also be used to mark a suspicious roadside attraction seen by the pilot to cue the CPG onto it. As an alternative store method, the CPG can use the TADS or the HMD line of sight to designate a location and press store on the left TDEC grid to store the target or waypoint while the page is displayed. Otherwise, when not on the store page, the left TDAC grip store button will only store the target point and the TADS is the selected site. At L6 is the transmit option, but this will come later when the interflight data link is added. 
In the next video, we'll learn how to create and edit routes, how to set direct to destinations and acquisition sources based on points. Thank you for watching.